Somebody say Packet Schroeder syndrome? Luckily for you, I know exactly what that is. Come on. Let's get started. Paget Schroeder syndrome, also referred to as effort thrombosis, is a case in which thrombus forms in the axillary subclavian vein at the costoclavicular junction due to strenuous and repetitive upper extremity activity. It is a disorder of the anterior thoracic outlet region where the subclavian vein passes through the intersection of the clavicle and first rib. There are several ways in which this can occur. A few include hypertrophy muscles in the area and injury to the area. The hypertrophied anterior scalene and subclavius muscles can compress the vein from both posterior and anterior sides. The subclavian vein is located at the point of maximal compression from the clavicle and first rib, which could cause complications in the case of abnormal bone morphology. Injury to the area can cause the loose connective tissue around the vein to become dense collagen scar, thus making the vein less mobile and leaving it susceptible to stretches and tears whenever the diameter of the costoclavicular space is changed. Some patients may begin with positional venous obstruction and then with time and without intervention progress into Paget's Schroeder syndrome. If a patient is suffering from intermittent positional venous obstruction, they will often present with symptoms of arm discoloration and swelling that is brought on by certain exercises and arm positions. If a patient is suffering from Paget Schroeder syndrome or effort thrombosis, then they will almost always be symptomatic. These symptoms typically include a blue, heavy, swollen, painful arm. Prominent venous patterns can form and become apparent in superficial collateral veins in the upper arm, neck, and anterior chest in those that are suffering from a chronic form of the syndrome. Those at risk of experiencing Paget Schroeder syndrome are individuals who are involved in activities that require repetitive and prolonged hyperabduction or external shoulder rotation, or in some cases, increased muscle bulk. Individuals who typically fit within this category include painters, car mechanics, bodybuilders, swimmers, and even baseball players. Most of those affected are able to link the onset of the disease to a specific strenuous event or repetitive motion. Fortunately for those who are in the at-risk category, it is still very unlikely that they will suffer from paget schroeder syndrome because it is a relatively rare condition. In the United States, only one to two patients out of every 100,000 will develop this condition per year. Therefore, only about 3,000 to 6,000 people will have it in over the course of a year. Those in high-level baseball clubs are among some of the most at risk, with one individual every five years developing symptoms per baseball club. There are three different categories of thoracic outlet syndrome, which are neurogenic thoracic outlet syndrome, venous thoracic outlet syndrome, and arterial thoracic outlet syndrome. We are focusing on venous thoracic outlet syndrome, which is separated into three more categories, which are secondary thrombosis, paget schroeder syndrome, and intermittent positional obstruction. The name paget schroeder syndrome comes from the contributions that two separate individuals made towards the condition. Sir James Paget was the first to describe spontaneous thrombosis of the subclavian vein in 1875, and von Schroeder theorized that this thrombosis resulted from damage to the vein by muscular strain. Thus, the condition was termed Paget Schroeder syndrome in 1949. 
Thrombolysis is the standard first step that is commonly used to treat this syndrome, but it is important that it is followed up with surgical decompression in the area or thrombus will likely return within 30 days. This occurs in nearly one third of patients receiving treatment. First rib resection is the most common method of surgical decompression. Early thrombosis in the area can be easily treated, but over time, it can become organized, adherent, and fibrotic, with extreme cases leading to a solid occluded cord. A duplex ultrasound scan is considered to be diagnostic and has high accuracy in determining if a patient is suffering from Paget-Schroeder syndrome. Color Doppler, Spectral Doppler, and Grayscale should all be used to evaluate the subclavian and axillary veins to rule out thrombus. Acute thrombus will appear more hypoechoic, while chronic thrombus will appear more hyperechoic. If a vein is occluded, you will also see reduced or no flow distal to the area of concern.